بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والحمد لله رب العالمين Ladies and gentlemen it's a great pleasure to be here with you today and I would like to thank you all for coming to this session um, I was looking at the panelists here and probably this is the only session where we had gender inequality i.e. females are more than males so we'll appreciate that session um, we had four, five distinguished speakers with us today. We'll start from my neighbor, Dr. Rola Majdalani, His Excellency Dr. Matar Miyadi, uh, Engineer uh, Zainab Abu Zaid, Yana Abu Talib, Dr. Hamul Amrani. Um, our session today is an initiative we will start with a presentation from the World Bank about an initiative talking about the water security in the Middle East and North Africa. This presentation will be given by a very well-known friend of the MENA region, Dr. Anders, who has been working for the Swedish International Development Agency for three year, years based in Amman and he joined early this year the World Bank working as senior water resource management specialist at the global water practice. Prior to working with, for CEDA, Anders also worked for CWE, and he was heading the transboundary water management department. Anders had his PhD on water negotiation in the Jordan River Basin. So he's, he's from within the region and he has been working for the region for quite some time. And he also published over 100 papers and book chapters. Um, so Anders, please, the floor is yours. Good morning. Can you hear me? You can't hear now you can hear me. Good, good. Good morning everyone. It's about here. Uh, it's great to be back. I, as uh, Razi said, I, I've been here for three years, and, uh, and now I'm coming back, back as a visitor, and it's, it's uh, feeling very well. Uh, thank you for the introduction, uh, Ghazi, um, and thank you to all the panelists that uh, have agreed uh, kindly to join us uh, to discuss this regional water security assessments. Thanks to all of you that have uh, come to listen and uh, hopefully interact in the uh, discussion. I will make a presentation uh, of a, an assessment that is ongoing. So this is work in progress, uh, I'd like to highlight, um, that the World Bank has been doing, uh, interacting with some of you uh, already prior to this and continuing to, uh, to interact. Um, this regional water security assessments of the MENA region uh, will be, I'm giving you a bit of the background, it will be presented at the the League of Arab States Sustainability Week in mid-May. Um, so it's not, we're not finalized yet with it. And also uh, recognizing the complexities um, of, um, of the region, uh, we see even, we, even when there is a final product, uh, we will also consider this to be, uh, in a sense, work in progress that always can be uh, improved. So we're eager here and we're eager in the con con coming months and years also to hear your input and your views uh, to, to as what we have gathered in a correct way, uh, but also things we may have missed or, or misunderstood or misinterpreted. So, so we're really open to this and if there's no time here, please approach me uh, and, and, and Gazi uh, afterwards and, and my colleague Dambutsu as well. Uh, so by those words, I'd like to just uh, go ahead and quickly um, tell you a little bit about what you're doing. Uh, so. The World Bank is engaged mostly at the country level, as uh, I guess most of you know, uh, in, in water, in many other sectors as well. 
haven't been so much engaged in the MENA region at the region level. In, in many other regions, uh, Africa, Asia, etc., there's been a lot of water engagement at the region level. Not so much in this region. Um, and, but taking into account the importance of uh, the uh, regional engagement uh, that is about to change. And to help us, the World Bank, understand the region better, we have uh, embarked on doing this region water security assessment. So it's a learning experience for the World Bank uh, and hopefully something that's also uh, important and, and hopefully useful for the region and the clients as such. Uh, and this is the assessment is part of something called the Region Water Security Initiative, which is part of the global water practice at the World Bank. This is just a snapshot. I'll not go into detail, uh, but uh, this provides you an overview of uh, the work that the um, World Bank is doing in its uh, portfolio in water. Um, that's mainly, again, on the national level. The Region Water Security Initiative has as an objective to promote an enabling environment for addressing water security uh, in, the, in the MENA region. And the ideas to do this uh, that we have is to raise the water dialogue to a more strategic level. So not, uh, not only uh, in interacting, but this would still be our main interacting points with the ministries of water or the likes, but also trying to engage uh, where, where the World Bank often engages also with the uh, ministries of finance and trying to, to raise the game and pinpoint why this is important also for the national economies uh, of all of the countries of uh, the region. Um, also, I'd like to stress that, that uh, we like to build on existing platforms. Um, that are already well established. Uh, and that's why we partner with the League of Arab States, for example, um, in, in the uh, Sustainability Week, uh, and using the institutions that are here already and trying to uh, perhaps uh, join forces to, together with them to improve the water situation in uh, the region. So there are two clusters of activities. One is focusing on consensus for action on water security, um, and the other one is uh, increasing access and sharing technology and policy options. So then, coming, coming down to the regional water security uh, assessment, which is again then part of the regional water security initiative. We've been partnering with uh, the World Resources in Institute as well as the Utrecht uh, University from the Netherlands. And the idea, I mentioned uh, already that the idea is to raise the level of the interaction to include ministers of finance. Focusing on water resources, service delivery, and water risk. And FCV, that's uh, World Bank acronym, stands for Fra Fragility, Conflict, and Violence. Uh, and in a sense, is, is uh, directly related to the theme of, uh, of uh, this Arab Water Week, uh, which talks about managing water in fragile environments. Also drawing upon the knowledge um, and uh, innovations that happen not, uh, not only outside of the region, but in the region, uh, because there are in important um, innovations that are happening in the region. And we believe that there is, there is scope for, uh, for knowledge sharing at the regional level. So we'd like to contribute to that in, in any way we, we can. Um, and it will also show, and I'll come to that towards the end, uh, as a benchmark where we can compare and contrast the countries uh, to see how, how well uh, or not so well they're doing uh, in, in, in uh, relation to each other and at the regional level. And hopefully this can also spur, spur action. So the focus of the, of the report and on the assessment is on water resources, water services, as well as water-related risk. And we ask ourselves three major questions. <clears throat> are water resources being managed sustainably and efficiently? And are water services being delivered reliably and affordably? And number three, are water-related risks being appropriately recognized and mitigated? Uh, so those were the guiding questions for, for the work that we've been embarking on. So if we start on the, on the water resources, and here I'll not go into great depth here, but I'd like to highlight a couple of, of things which we believe are important. Uh, one is relating to uh, the GDP. If you compare the world's uh, average of the GDP resources that are exposed to very, very high water, water stress, it's around 20%. In the MENA region, it's 70, over 70%. Uh, so this is something that uh, is not news to you, but we, uh, we think it's interesting to, to put this uh, into co to context and also uh, as a tool to raise the level with the Ministers of Finance. 
There is unsustainable use. Uh, for those of you attended, uh, that attended uh, the previous session, uh, I think some of the issues and challenges were highlighted there, uh, talking about the, the productivity and the, the output, economic output per, um, per drop of water used. Um, and it's clearly in, in some areas not, not the sustainable use. We have a challenge with water quality. We have a challenge with water productivity. Uh, and I apologize, but this uh, figure is not showing uh, very well. But the main point that I wanted to illustrate here and that we are highlighting in the report is that the water productivity, contrary to what you may think, given the extreme water scarcity this region has, uh, the region also has by far the lowest productivity, uh, water productivity in the world, uh, which is, you know, for an outsider perhaps uh, a bit counterintuitive. Um, but this is, this is partly because of the high level of subsidies, and I get, I get to that later, uh, that goes uh, to, uh, to, uh, to public, uh, public supply, but also, and, and more so, to uh, uh, subsidies for water and agri uh, agricultural water. And what to do about it? Uh, no, uh, no groundbreaking things, but we believe that a reduction of use um, and savings, uh, which can be in terms of improved uh, irrigation techniques, uh, dealing with leakages, uh, but also along the whole supply chain, the, in, the in the water to food from the field to the fork, uh, there are lots of losses of food and thereby water and energy that could be addressed. Non-conventional supplies such as um, uh, increased reuse tree of treated wastewater and desalination. A bit of more strategic resource planning could also help. I'll not go into detail of this, of this figure, but it, it, the point here is to show that um, the degree and by which you can reduce uh, or by which you have to reduce until um, 20, uh, 2030 your agricultural water use to cater for the increased projected need in uh, the domestic and industrial sector. Um, and this is sorted by country. Uh, this will come out more clear uh, in, the, in the report, obviously, but it, it shows the relations uh, between the um, potential decrease of agricultural water and the, uh, the water that's needed in the industry and the domestic sector. This is just to show that already now, I'm sorry this is not showing very well, but basically the point here is to show that the Middle East, North Africa has already uh, about 50% of the desalination capacity of the world, and that's slated to at least stay the same or perhaps increase even with, uh, with, uh, with the developments. But then again, it's mainly, although the developments in some other countries, but mainly the Gulf region and, and Israel that have the capacity or built out capacity in, in, uh, at, uh, at the current stage. Groundwater stress is an important thing. We've heard it before in this Arab Water Week. We are also recognizing this. They are overexploited. The challenges and coming also to the whole issue of fragility, which we're talk talking about this, uh, this Arab Water Week. Um, what happens in this country, for example, when uh, the influx, large influx of the Syrian ref refugees, when they come, the solution, uh, within quotation marks, has been to uh, to, uh, to pump even more and beyond sustainable levels the groundwater uh, predominantly in the, in the north here. And this is a way in the way where, uh, which you have to deal with it, but, but which is clearly unsustainable in the long run. Something needs to be done about that. Services, um, this is the uh, access to drinking water supply and sanitation by country. And these are the MDG uh, figures based on the MDG Plus project, which UNESCO has been leading. Um, and as you can see, it's, it's uh, not fully universal access, and in the fragile countries, it's definitely not. Um, but I w wanted to make a comment here also that as we move towards the SDG, the indicators will be tougher. So the levels uh, of access uh, to both the drinking water, uh, what is defined as drinking water and uh, sanitation services will actually go down, um, not the only in this region, but in other regions as well. Um, another issue which I touched upon, and this is the proportion of agricultural uh, or uh, water subsidies. And here you can see then, the, um, from this angle it's not very clear, but the bar to the right is the subsidies, the level of sub the subsidies in the MENA region compared to all the other regions of the world. And as you can see, the subsidies are much higher 
uh, in, this, uh, in this part of the world. And we would argue that this is not something that leads to uh, good, good management of water and improved efficiency, but rather the contrary. Uh, it may actually lead to waste of water, which is not uh, something that, uh, that is uh, very helpful in addressing the water scarcity in the region. Water pricing, this doesn't come out that clearly either, uh, but all the green, green dots here are, um, are uh, cities in the, uh, in the region. Some are charging more, some are charging almost nothing uh, for, the, uh, for the water in, in the major cities. Uh, and the point here is also to, to, to use the price as a tool to improve efficiency and improve good management of water. And it, it applies to the agricultural sector, of course, but also uh, to the way you, you're pricing water uh, in, uh, in, uh, domestic, in the domestic sector. Um, so there's something that could be done here also. And as a benchmark uh, on the top, you can see that's the price of Barcelona as, a, as, a, as, a, as an outside of the region. Um, uh, city. What can we do about it? Again, no rocket science here, but uh, better data and monitoring is, is one, one uh, way to do it. Innovative mechanisms uh, in irrigation, uh, improve efficiency, um, and technologies for service provision, but also pricing reforms and subsidies. Removal, we put here, it's uh, perhaps a strong word, but addressing the subsidies, so not necessarily remove them in completely, but actually looking at them to, to, find, to, to, to decrease them and, and uh, find a, a better uh, level for them. The risks that we are addressing in the, uh, in the study is looking at climate change impacts and the fact that this will hit the region in various ways, but it will hit the region, uh, and meaning, among other things, um, more unpredictability. So it's not only less water in some parts, but also uh, the, the important aspect of not knowing when it comes, uh, which actually is a major hassle for, uh, for farmers using rain-fed agriculture, the, or the green water as it's, as, as it's called. Transboundary water um, is also another challenge. There isn't enough cooperation over transboundary water in the region. Uh, the region is trying to address this in various ways, and that this should be encouraged. Uh, but better management of the transboundary waters are obviously going to help. The nexus, which was also again the, the very good session that preceded this one, um, it's talking about the unintended consequences. Perhaps uh, it's important to recognize those. For ex I'll give you an example. If you um, work on, on a sort of green approach to uh, irrigation or to energy, Solar pumping would be a, a good, good idea. But what, what happens if you don't um, understand the full complexity or take it in is that if a, if a farmer gets a, a solar pump, uh, that's of course great from a climate change perspective. It's a green energy. But what often happens, and this has been proven by study, is that the farmer then would actually uh, pump more water. So it'll, the, green, the green energy, the solar pumping, will actually become a driver for increased water scarcity. So there is a need to find mechanisms either to connect solar, uh, solar, uh, solar power to the different grids in the country so that if it's a farmer or whoever it is can sell it on the grid. Uh, so, so there's an alternative use for the, for the energy or finding, finding very strict quotas for how much uh, you can pump. So those are the, in, the sort of water energy food nexus consequences or an example of what you have to address in this regard. Uh, we, food insecurity is a major uh, issue. These are just to show where the major import of virtual water or food basically uh, are coming from in the region and uh, coming from, from all over the globe. Uh, that will uh, likely uh, increase or at least be kept steady. And uh, then we have the issue of fragility and displacement, which I mentioned one example. This is, this is Iraq, just, just one example. We have it in Libya, we have it in, in, in Syria and the neighboring countries. The effects in Lebanon and Jordan are, are, are really uh, felt uh, deeply. Uh, we have Yemen, uh, et cetera, um, where water issues become, become an, an important factor that you have to address. What can you do about it then? Diversify your supply, early warning system, improve the transboundary water cooperation, improve uh, virtual water, 
uh, input uh, and being more strategic about the crops you're actually growing. Uh, this is also uh, another figure that we believe is, is helpful um, to get the attention beyond the water sector. This shows the predicted effects of climate change on the GDP growth in the region. I mean, the region, the, 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 the other regions as well. And you can see it's, it's expected that the decrease or the effects, negative effects on GDP in the region is between minus 6 and minus 14%, uh, which is massive. Uh, so not addressing the, the uh, climate change in this context will actually uh, affect the economies uh, to a large extent. I mean, it's, and this is, this is the average figure, but it'll affect some countries in the region more, some less, but, but it's still going to be serious in all the countries. In the interest of time, and given that this slide is not showing very well, I'll, I'll skip to that. Um, and actually, coming to the last two slides, and this is uh, to show you how we'd like to project, uh, and hopefully in an easy way, but you may, you may say that, oh, no, this is, this is not useful. Uh, so, so I'm open to hearing your views on this. We're looking at six dimensions, sustainability of water use, total water productivity, that's the water resource, the access, drinking water and sanitation, that's the services, and then transboundary waters and climate change robustness, those are some of the risks. And then we're coming up, and, uh, this is not showing uh, very well, but w I will just explain. What we are wanting to do is to have a snapshot of every country. So we're doing this for, this is just an example and it's work in progress. This is for Jordan. You have a pie chart and if you're good on, in all these aspects, uh, th those that I mentioned, you will have a full pie chart. Uh, so our, our aim um, in, when looking ahead uh, in, the, in the coming decades or so would, would be to address the issues that do not do not have a full pie chart. Uh, so this will be a snapshot that we think uh, would be hopeful and useful for um, engagement with the water sector, but also beyond the water sector, with ministers of finance, ministers of, of planning, etc. So I think I'll stop there and, uh, and give it the floor back to you, Gassi. Thank you. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you. We'll be having the questions later on. So, uh, do you have a seat here? So, in light of what you have heard from Anders, I would like to ask His Excellency Dr. Matar Niadi to give us his perspectives on how we can integrate the policy dialogue since he's the Under Secretary of Water Resource, uh, of Ministry of Energy and the water portfolio is, is within his capacity as the undersecretary. Probably before Dr. Matar starts, I should give a brief about Dr. Matar being the undersecretary, as I said, in, in the United Arab Emirates, and he is a graduate from Edinburgh University. He, his PhD was on, on the uh, international negotiations and rationalization of energy water consumption. Um, Dr. Matar, he is also chairing several boards like the Gulf Corporation, Council, uh, and a few other um, entities and initiatives in the Gulf region. So please, Dr. Matar. Thank you. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Excellency, distinguished guest, let me start. I'm chairing the Interconnection Authority in the Gulf region, not the Gulf Council region. So <laughs> just to clear the record, Annie. I need to start by, think, by thanking the World Bank for hosting this important topic. Water, as we talked this morning, has an effect in all aspects of our life. As I said more this morning, it affects our health, our environment, economy, peace, stability, security, energy, agriculture, development, food, all aspects of our life, one way or the other, water is being connected. On the other hand, water is affected by a number of elements like war, overexploitation, climate change, pollution from different sources, land use in the facility of the water source, and energy as well. If we look to the MENA region, we could divide uh, 
country into two large groups. Group one, country which have low level of renewable water resources, such as owning, or owning river, and my, such as they don't have any, uh, low, don't, they don't have a renewable uh, water resources and depend heavily on desalination and underground uh, water. Most of the Arab world is coming within this category. The other category, country that got much of their water from rivers, like for example, Sudan, Egypt, Iraq, and Syria. In the Arabian Gulf, water security is an important item in all government agenda. Plans to deal with water scarcity in different circumstances, including emergency, are discussed and necessary plan have been executed. So people taking this matter seriously. I would like to use the word of His Excellency Dr. Hazem, the Jordanian Minister of Water and Agriculture, when he ha rightly said yesterday, we know the challenging. What is the possible solution for the water challenging in our region? In my opinion, we could define the water challenges or opportunity. It's good that you look to the challenge and try to find out where the opportunity into four main topic. In the supply side, in the transmission, and the demand and policy. For the sake of time, I will limit myself to talk on the supply side. And the supply side, what we can do to increase the supply of renewable water in our part of the world. And I will try to list a number of initiatives that would apply one way or the one in one country or the other country, but we could use this platform to share the practice. Cloud seeding program. In UAE, has, there is an, an ambitious program started early 1990. The program play a significant role to increase the amount of rainfall in the UAE. And two years ago, this program is, is enter a new stage of launching a $5 million price to encourage R&D in climate seeding in order to make the cloud seeding more efficient and more effective. This is one initiative. The other one, adopting a new technology for desalination, like forward osmosis, to increase the efficiency of the desalination and to reduce the energy 